Hi there. Today we're going to look at how to make a custom button in configurable workspaces open up a modal. So if you followed my last tutorial, what we did was um, in this CSM workspace, uh, we're on a case record right now, and we added this custom button, the crazy button. But we ended the tutorial at a point where the button did not do anything. Uh, and so in this tutorial, we're going to make this button open up uh, a modal like this. So this should be the end result. We've got a full screen modal open. There's a list component uh, here. It has the, uh, it's showing a list of cases from the case table, uh, even though we only just have one. So uh, it looks a bit silly. Uh, and then we've got the sysid um, of the record that was open uh, is passed into the, the title field. So this is what we're going to be creating today. All right, so I've reset my instance so that the button is back to doing nothing. And I've written a blog post, uh, which is a guide through this tutorial. Um, I will share the link in the description of this video. And I might go um, a peek here once in a while uh, in, in case I forget what the steps are. So first of all, we want to create the, the contents of what's going to be inside the modal. So let's start there. So for that, we need to go into UI Builder. Uh, we'll just use the uh, application navigator, click on UI Builder, open it up. And just like in the last tutorial, we're going to be using the, um, the CSM FSM configurable workspace. So we're going to look for that experience here. I know that it's on the second page. So we're going to be operating within within that experience. That's also my um, my update. Um, my scope is also set to CSM configurable workspace, just so you know. So here we've got an overview of the pages and variants. Um, this is Utah, so this might look slightly different if you're still on an older version. And then here we just create a new page. Um, so we're going to click Create New Page. Uh, and it's going to also create a variant for us because a page is sort of just like the uh, the path um, and then that path can be can point towards one variant or multiple variants which will be more clear in a second uh, so let's call it in keeping with the crazy theme I'm gonna call it the crazy page um, in this case we do want some uh, URL parameters because we want to pass the uh, sysid and the table name. So let's start with a table and then we add sysid. So we've got two uh, parameters that we're going to pass to uh, our page. And then it asks us about the variant. So again, the page is sort of like equal to the route and the variant is, is equal to the, the content. Um, we're not going to define audiences, so that looks good. So, okay, that should be created. And here we have our page and our variant. And here you can also sort of see the structure of the of the other parts of this experience. Um, we've got the, the page and the variant, and then here we've got the record page with many different variants. And we'll be looking at that in a minute. All right, so let's go into our variant. Wait for it to load. All right. So let's start by um, adding the list component. Good. Um, and now we want the table. Uh, so the list component just takes a table as a parameter and just displays a list of records from that table. So instead of being this being static task, let's make this dynamic and bind it to the parameter. So let's go to the context. This is the props. So these are the URL pr parameters that we set when we were setting up this, um, this variant. And then here we can click on table. Right now it's loading. It'll probably do nothing because we don't have a test value. You can set those here. So let's go ahead and do that as well. Um, so the table, let me just cheat real quick. It's this one, SN customer service case. And the sysid 
I'm not sure which one. Uh, I think it's grabbing that one as well. There's only one record in this table anyway, so there we go. So that looks more or less correct. And the other thing we want to make dynamic is this title. And that one you can find uh, much further down, all the way here. And so in this case, we do something slightly different. So we're going to use a script, but it's the same idea. Um, and we're going to use JavaScript uh, template variables. And so we're going to plug in the variable here, API dot context. So again, we've got the context, we've got the props for properties. And then here we've got the sysid. We're using backticks because this allows us to plug in the variable here. This is modern JavaScript, not like the, um, the non-modern JavaScript that you use on the server side. So we might as well use the benefits of modern JavaScript when we can, like like here. And you see here that using these test uh, variables, it shows up here in the title. Um, that's enough for now in terms of content. So let's save. Um, all right, what's next? So we've got the content of our modal. Um, now we still want to, um, let's see here. This is the UX screen collection uh, record, and this links to the UX app routes. And we need to go there. And here we see how the routes are defined. So this route we will need later when we're uh, mapping between the button and the uh, and the modal. But what I want to do here, um, what, what we need to change here, is this reference to the macroponent. In this case, it's referencing the work workspace app shell, and that's sort of like the generic entire um, the entire experience type of component. And what we need to be referring to is the macroponent or the, the, the page where we want this modal to show up. Um, and in this, in our case, that's the record. Uh, so what we actually need to do is uh, look up in the CSM FSM configurable workspace, what is the macroponent where we want this to show up. And in our case, it's this one, it's record default. You can pick another one if you want, but this is the one um where we want it to show up in our case so we need two things actually we need um going back here this is a reference field so using sn utils you can double click here and you can see the uh the <clears throat> sort of a computer readable or machine readable um, format and it's a sysid so we need a sysid but we also need something here. So it's a parent ma macroponent composition element ID. And this is a reference to, um, to the name of the modal inside the macroponent. So this is the macroponent, this is the record default. Uh, and we, what we need to do here is we need to figure out the sysid and we do that by going to the page definition. So on the page definition, we can copy sysid, we can close that, double click here using snutils, paste it there, boom, it changed the record. Why do I do it like that? Because if you go here and you search, and you search for CSM record, you get, um, like even if you leave out the asterisk, let's say, there's many different records and you just can't, it's hard to figure out what's what. So it's easier to do, do it the way I did. And then the next thing you do, you want to target this parent macroponent composition element ID. Um, and this one is actually um, inside this macroponent that we're targeting. We've got a modal. This is like the standard modal that you can use to plug in stuff. And this one has an ID here, modal container viewport. And that's the one that we need. So I'm going to plug that one in there. Now, there is something that happens here that I noticed. Um, as soon as we save this, for some reason, um, if we go back to the overview of pages, it's going to disappear here. I think this is a bug in the current version. I'm not sure why this is happening, but just so you're aware that this happens. It only happens when you fill in this field. So I'm just going to save this. 
Um, but as long as we keep this open, we're, we're okay. All right, let's have a quick cheat, a uh, quick look at, um, at the steps. Design your variant. Yes, we did that. Configure the variant. Yes. Right, and so the next step is UX add-on event mapping. So what we've done now is we have the, um, the content of the, of the modal. Um, we've told the modal inside which mac component we want it to appear. Um, and we've even told it within that mac component which ID it should target. Um, now we can work on um, making an actual mapping. Um, we need to visit this um, table manually like this because it's not part of the menu. And then here we need to create a new record. So this is sort of a manual step that's not very um, intuitive. So event mapping, staying with the crazy theme, we can call it crazy mapping. Um, and then here, what we need to do is we need to reference um, UI action bar, because that's where our button was defined. Um, if we do that, you see this changed a bit. Here, source declarative action. Here, we actually need to select the uh, button we created in the uh, in the last tutorial. So that's the one I showed at the beginning. Um, here, parent Mac component. That's our, um, our record component again. I don't think it's in the clipboard anymore. So let me just do that again. Copy that one. Uh, here. Again, using this SN utils trick. And then here, it should give us a selection of events within this Mac component, some events that we can use. And here we see open modal. We also see other ones. If you want to target other ones, the configuration is a, is a bit different. Um, in this case, we want the open modal. And then we're left here with a target payload mapping. So what this does is this tells us, um, or this tells ServiceNow which fields um, can be sent through through the payload. Uh, so this is sort of the the contract definition of the um, uh, of the mapping. And so this is also pretty standard. Uh, we can just go here. Apparently, this is the same. You know, no matter your setup, you always do pretty much the same. And what we can see here is we've got. Um, a couple of bindings. So, like I said, this is a, the contract that it makes with the um, with the, uh, the the button event, and and when that gets sent to the uh, to the modal. Um, so we've got a route key, we've got a size key, we've got a fields key, and we've got a params key. So let's um, put that in here, and um, and that's it for this. Uh, for this record. So this is the definition of the mapping. Right. And so then the last step that we need to do is if we go back if you recall in the previous tutorial we did something like this or was it actions and events? This gave us a list of all the relevant um, modules and then we go to action bar declarative actions. And here, this is the crazy button that we declared in the last tutorial. And we need to go to the client action. And this is where the payload gets defined. So remember this part we left empty and now we get to fill it. So in this case, um, we fill it with, what do we fill it with? A small JSON object that looks like this. So what do we do here? We define what the route is. And these are all things that we saw in the add-on event mapping. These are, are fields that were defined in the contract. So this route, this is the route of our crazy variant. Um, then the fields, those are the fields that we want to send. And 
the ones that we've already configured inside of UI Builder, if you remember. And, uh, and that's, that's it. That's all we send. Applicable to form, that's all we change. So we can press update. And if I'm not mistaken, that should be it. So that should allow us to test the button. There we go. It took a while to load, but here it opened up. And now we see um, the live loaded sysid that's from, from here, and we see the list. Uh, it's not the most useful use case, because why would you display this? But it's just a showcase of, of what you can do. Um, one little aesthetic thing is that the close dialog button is overlapping the, the buttons in the list, um, and everything seems a bit cramped, like there's no space. So there's one extra uh, tweak that we can make, and that is in the, um, in the payload definition. There's also the possibility, also defined in this UX add-on mapping, there's a size key we can use, and we can put this to, there's different options. You can do S small, medium, large, but you also have full screen. If we add a comma, update, that should make it full screen. It still won't solve all our problems, as you'll see in a second. See, it's full screen, but there's still overlap there. So we actually need to move this component down a little bit. And we can do that here, um, for instance, by going into styles and just adding some padding at the top. Saving that. Refresh. Uh, this happens sometimes. You need to refresh again. There's a slight delay. There we go. Now we've got our model.